everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Nancy Ennis and I'd like to welcome all of you to Unity of Charlotte on this kind of cool but wonderful Sunday morning. So good we can be together. And I'd like to welcome you into our time of contemplation, a time of relaxation, a time to be still and time to listen to that voice within. So welcome. Let us begin our time together today with our mission statement. We'll take that together with vibrant, a louder word than all the rest. How's that? We are a vibrant community dedicated to celebrating spiritual freedom and sharing abundant joy through love, prayer, and service. Welcome home. We hope you all feel that welcome home today. Our chaplain, Lana Moorhead, will bring us the daily word. Good morning. morning. Today's daily word is divine order. The presence of God within illumines my mind and guides my actions. A health or financial challenge may seem to cloud our thoughts. Discord in business or personal relationships may feel overwhelming. Yet regardless of appearances, we can see beyond any illusion when we affirm the truth. The presence of God within illumines my mind and guides my actions. No longer does the past or present occupy our thinking in negative ways. Instead, we dwell on the comforting truth that God is with us at all times and in all ways. Centering our minds on constructive, loving, hopeful ideas, we are ready for a spiritual awakening in quietness and confidence. We rise above limitation and rejoice in the light of a new day. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, which shines brighter and brighter until full day. Proverbs 4, 18. My name is Lana Moorhead. I will be in the prayer room after service, and I look forward to seeing you. settle in, sit back with our hands in our lap and our feet on the ground, uncross, close our eyes and take a deep breath. And just feel that presence. Yes. Feel that mighty presence of God, heart to heart, as we are connected in this mighty web and matrix of life and love and peace and joy. We acknowledge the truth of our beings, that this is the truth at this very moment. No matter what the appearances are on the outer, we don't care what's happening in the three-dimensional world. That is not who and what we are. We are of the Spirit of the Most High. Brought here in His image and likeness to express from the heart to heart the love of God. And as we allow that truth and that beauty and that joy to just release It is so natural. Oh, it feels so good because that is who you are, the authentic self. And so we breathe, 
Rebreathe in love and breathe out. Collectively, we breathe it into Charlotte. We breathe it into the prayer box of those who have requested prayer. We breathe this love, joy, and wholeness into Syria. We breathe it into the sex trafficking that we see. We see, breathe it into this political discord and see wholeness and health and everybody coming together as one for the highest and best good. Yes, that is who we are. And we thank you, God, for this truth that sets us free. Let us continue on in this place of prayer by joining together in our meditation song, which is the God chant this morning that reminds us how much we love God. Let's join together and sing our, our meditation song, and Alan Batten will lead our meditation this morning. you to forget the hustle and bustle of the daily world. Settle back into your chair. Close your eyes if you're comfortable with it. And float along with this meditation. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. And you're in the middle of a field surrounded by wildflowers. And ahead of you is this beautiful mountain, which you're going to climb. You're equipped for it. You have the boots. You have the climbing sticks. You have the backpack, you have the rope, you have the strength. And you start climbing this mountain. And ever so gradually, the field of flowers falls away from your feet. And you look out over the beautiful plain with trees and rolling hills. As you climb the mountain slowly but surely, Halfway up, you can see your goal. And you move slowly toward the top of the mountain. Finally, you make it. And you look out over the rolling fields. 
and you look behind you and you see your path that took you here. You see all your triumphs, all your mistakes. That's the past. And you look forward and you see your future. And in your future, you see places where you can step aside and let the exigencies of experience take over for you and you don't make a mistake. Sit here for a moment in the silence and contemplate your future from this high, high mountain in the silence. Now you've seen everything that you can see and you slowly make your way back down confidently knowing your future ahead of you is bright and filled with shining experiences. For God will be your guide. God has been your guide. All you have to do is listen to God's guidance. You say, thank you, God, for this experience with your threefold thank you, God, blessing together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen and amen.
thank you to our wonderful choir. Let's give them a hand. So good to have you. Well, I would like to extend a welcome again to everyone who's here today and also all who are joining us on TV and everyone who is joining us on YouTube and anywhere else you might find us. We are so glad you are with us and invite you to come and visit us on Sunday morning. We're here every Sunday, 10.30 a.m. 401 East Arrowwood Road, and we'll be waiting for you. So also today, we have the opportunity to celebrate Poetry Week, and I didn't even know it was Poetry Week, and somebody reminded me. It was Linda, and she has a poem for us for um, about spring to celebrate Poetry Week, right? Month. Month. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I sure didn't know about that. So come on up and share your poem. Eggs, eggs, ova, it's that time of year. Suddenly the earth has popped open and scattered her seeds everywhere. She's been pregnant with possibilities all winter, been lying in wait. Now she's given birth all over everywhere you look. So inviting, so enticing, so heady, it makes me dizzy. The smell alone drives me wild with ecstasy. The ripeness, all open wide, inviting us in. Such a gift, just here for the taking. How could one ask for more? The air smells so sweet, I get drunk on the honeysuckle. The flowering shrubs, the lacy green trees, the lilies, the wildflowers, the hummingbirds, the bees, the redbirds, the sparrows. The whole city is smiling, a great big grin, a great big belly laugh. It makes me dance, gives me such a rush, fills my heart to overflowing. I'm in heaven, surely this is heaven here and now. How could one ask for more? It's raining honey on us all, we're all sticky and sweet with it. Swimming in a sea of luscious air in the Garden of Eden floating and emoting, just bobbing up and down, creativity dancing all around. How could one ask for more? I take my hat off, I curtsy to you, I bask in your glow. It's hard to sleep, I'm so full of energy, so amazed at what I see. My heart just keeps laughing out loud. It's so wonderful to be alive, to feel, to see, to smell, to touch, to hear. My heart's so full, so filled with love for all of creation. I applaud you, O oh great spirit. I bow in reverence, filled with love for you. How could one ask for more? December, dark and cold. Where is the light? When old man year is bending low. Where is the light? When the sun runs off to bed too soon. Where is the light? And there's nothing but a skinny moon. Where, Where is, is the light? light? Where, Where is the light? Where is the light? Where is the light? Oh, the light's inside of me. Where is the light? When it's dark each morning when I rise Where is the light? And it's dark when my eggs are fried Where is the light? And it's dark when off to work I go Where is the light? And it's dark again when I get home Where, Where is, is the light? Where, Where is, is the light? Where, Where is, is the light? Where, Where is the light? light? Oh, the light's inside of me Where is the light? Where is the light? Oh, the light's inside of me. It's in my 
skin and in my bones, in my heart and in my soul. My love loves so bright and golden like a summer day. When the sun goes missing in the sky, it is rising in my eyes, chasing all the winter gloom away. I'm burning bright like kerosene. Where is the light? I'm twinkling like the Pleiades. Where is the light? I'm dancing like a candle flame. Where is the light? I'm sparkling like a fruit flambe. Where, Where is the light? Where is the light? Where is the light? Where is the light? Oh, the light's inside of me. Where is the light? Where is the light? Where is the light? Oh, the light's inside of me. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a barrel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a barrel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a barrel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it Everybody got their light shining? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, so this is the month that we are focusing on our power of love. The power of love that is within us, the power of love that is all around us, the love that is God. This is the month for that. So what happened this week is I found a slogan, a saying that would really be a good one, I thought, for the power of love and for love month. And this is it. Love is the flow of life. Life is the flow of love. And your participation is requested. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. Okay, life is the flow of love. Love is the flow of life. Your participation is requested. So that's one that could be on a bumper sticker. We could put it on a billboard and it would be even better. Where it was found was on a food container a little container of some sort of moo juice or something. <laughs> so you never know where they will show up, but it is a good, a good slogan for month day. Our scripture today comes from Colossians. It's the first chapter and it starts with verse 26. This is Paul talking to the people of Colossians. He's telling them that he became a minister so he could reveal this to them. What he wanted to reveal to these people it's a mystery, which he says has been hidden for ages and generations, but now it's being revealed to us. It's Christ within your hope of glory. And I believe this is one of Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity's favorite sayings, because he had it engraved in one of the buildings at Unity Village. Christ in you, your hope of glory. So in our song, we looked for the light and we said, where is it? And then we said, whoops, it's inside of me. And then we said what we could do with it. And that's go forward and share our light and radiate our light into the world. So we know where the light is, right? It was hidden for ages and generations, I guess. Paul said so. But it's not hidden anymore. Most people know that this Christ nature, this spirit of God, this divinity is within us. We got that one down pretty good. But how well do we know the glory? Because a new day is dawning on planet Earth. We heard the song today about the new sun rising, the new day dawning. It's a day that's going to call us to be more than we thought we could be. 
to be a humanity that celebrates and expresses the glory into this world. A humanity that takes the love of power into the power of love as the living experience in our world. So it's time now to let go of the hope of glory. And it's time to claim the glory, participate in the glory, experience the glory, and live in the glory. Our message this morning is about how we can do that. The message is called The Glory and the Mud. So we find the story about the glory and the mud and the flow of divine life. And we know the glory. We've all been in the glory, right? You know, we feel that Christ spirit. We feel the joy. We feel the love. And we just know we're so connected. And it's just that place of glory. The mud is anything that takes us out of that place of glory. So here we are. We start out on our spiritual journey, and you might be able to connect to this with your journey, certainly I can, but we start off somewhere in our life. We're kind of asleep to what's happening in the world. Kind of asleep, we're walking through life, we're looking for something, but we're not quite sure what we're looking for, and it doesn't seem to be anywhere we can find it. And we're kind of just singing the song, oh, is that all there is to life? And it's kind of flat place in our life. Can anybody identify with that? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of how we start out. And then one day something happens. It could be something somebody says to us. Maybe a little sentence we read in the book. Maybe it's a time that we surrender and say, I can't do this anymore. I need help. Maybe we come into a unity church. But somehow we wake up to that glory and we realize that there is more in this world than what we've been looking for. We already have. And then we go on and we live our life in a different way. So in this time that we are making this change, we sometimes wonder, what is the glory? So a definition of glory from Carl, Charles Fillmore, he calls it the realization of the blending of the mind of man and the mind of God into the oneness experience. That's our glory. Discovering our spiritual nature and living from our nature and bringing it forward that's living in the glory. So our glory then is the abundant life that Jesus said we could have. He said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And that's what we are talking about when we talk about the glory. That abundant life. It's a life that unity teaches, a life that has peace and love and joy and fulfillment and harmony with the presence of God always active and alive in us. So we know what the glory is, and that's a good thing. The glory into, journey into glory is our spiritual path. And the glory is always expanding, always in a place of growing and being more than we thought it can be. So here we are, and you might have had this experience. You know, we're walking along that path, our spiritual path. Things are good, and we're feeling that presence, and then the mud. The mud shows up somewhere. <laughs> we find ourselves in the mud. Glory's calling. We know the experience. And the mud has us stuck. Stuck in the mud and the glory's coming. So that is how we start. And now we have a choice. Do we want to stay in the mud? Or do we want to get out and go back to the glory where we were before? Sometimes it's those mud experiences that slow down our journey. Sometimes they stop us in our tracks and we don't even go back to where we were, kind of get discouraged from one mud experience. But sometimes they, when they show up, they do kind of pull us down again. So this morning what we're going to talk about is how to get out of the mud, how to get unstuck, how to get out, and how to have greater glory in our daily life and less mud. So our spiritual journey then is a path into the greater glory. We're all pretty much aware of that. So how do we deal with the mud in life that comes our way? Well, we have a few mud awarenesses that I wanted to share with you today. <laughs> the first awareness of the mud is mud happens. <laughs> we focus on the glory so much and we forget the mud, or, which is even not so good, is we ignore the mud and we pretend it's not there and we don't deal with it and then what happens we find ourselves in a huge mud mess <laughs> if you've ever had one of those <laughs> so
So the glory, then the first one is mud happens. It can be mud that we create. It could be mud that life brings us, you know, that stuff that just happens. It can be mud that we can get out of. It might be mud that is something we have to cope with. But love, mud happens. It just happens. It's part of life. The glory and the mud are both part of our living experience. One's not better than the other. There's one we like more than the other. But the next awareness about the mud is all mud has value. Oh, I hear you say. <laughs> what could be the value? <laughs> when we go get stuck in the mud and we have a choice to get out, we get stronger inside of ourselves. We develop our overcoming spirit. And also our faith in God as our helper is enhanced every time we get out of the mud. But God is in all things. All things are in God. So obviously there must be something good in the mud. It must have a blessing for us. It must have a lesson for us. But something is there. So we want to extract the blessing that comes to us in the mud. And sometimes the experiences that are, we might call our mud experiences have the greatest blessing of all. We discover things about ourselves we wouldn't have known if we hadn't had that experience. So it has value and it's always good. The thing we can relate to nature that we're seeing right now, you know, we take a seed, we plant it in the mud or the dirt, and it rises up out of there and it blooms into a beautiful flower or a beautiful bush. That's kind of how it is with us if we can just make those mud experiences okay in our life. Story, um, who we might let help us. So here's this person and they're stuck in a pit, is what it's called. It's a place of mud. And a subjective person comes along and says, I feel for you down there. And then an objective person comes and says, well, it's logical that someone would fall in that pit. A Pharisee comes along and he said, only bad people fall into pits. A mathematician comes along and he calculates the dimension of the pit <laughs> and what it would take to get a person out. <laughs> a news reporter comes and wants an exclusive, exclusive story on the person in the pit. A new age person comes along and says, just affirm you're out of the pit. <laughs> Identify with that one. <laughs> Another new age person asks, what did you do to create yourself in the pit? <laughs> the realist says, now that's a pit. And the geologist tells the person to appreciate the rock structure that is around the pit. The IRS asks if the person in the pit was paying taxes on the pit. <laughs> And then someone came with pity and they said, oh, let me tell you about some of the pits I've been in. <laughs> Optimus came and said, you'll be able to get out of there. Pessimus came and said, you're going to be stuck in there forever. And then somebody with their Christ spirit open, somebody celebrating the glory came by, reached a hand down and helped the person out of the pit. So many pits and many people who might want to help us, but we just want to be careful that we have and we need to get out of there that um, somebody can come and help us. So the um, next then mud awareness is what is the mud made out of and what closes our heart and what is shutting our spirit down. So we get some awareness of what is happening. Anything that interferes with our partition, the flow of love could possibly be the mud. It can come from our thoughts of worry, complaining, criticizing, judging. That creates a lot of mud that's sometimes hard to get out of. And it can be, it can, can also come from our ego, trying to keep us safe. Sometimes the ego does that by creating mud dramas, you know, when you get caught up in and you go round and round and you really can't go anywhere from it. So first we need to be aware of the mud. What is it and how can it happen so that we can be more aware every time it happens and get ourselves out quicker, recognize it and go forth. So perhaps today, somewhere in your life, you might find that you are stuck, that you're in a stuck place, the glory is calling you, you want to move forward, but you are just right now stuck. And the glory is here and you want to get out. So let's look at one of some of the things that can stick us. We can get stuck in the mud of our intellect. Talking, thinking, writing, wishing for, and hoping for the glory. And never experience it. We can get caught in the mud of procrastination and indecision. It can be the mud made up. 
my eyes are not working. <laughs> I have a little mud experience here today, excuse me. <laughs> I will find some good in needing these glasses today, which I usually don't. Okay. So it can be the mud made up, the need to control, the need to be right. We can get stuck in repressed feelings and unforgiveness. That's the stuck in place. We can get stuck in repressed feelings of any kind, feelings that we have stuffed and ignored or denied. We can get stuck in a job that's not right for us, a relationship that doesn't support us. We can get in stuck in the need to please. We can get stuck in unhealthy living practices. So many places we can find ourselves stuck in our life. And after we find where it is and we get that mud awareness, the first step then is to accept it. We cannot go forward until we're aware of where the mud is and then accept the mud that happened is happening. And then we can move forward and get ourselves out of it. So let's look how we can do that. How can we get back on the path to glory and get out of the mud and leave it behind? First and foremost, all we need to do is want to get out and be willing to do whatever it takes to get ourselves out and be better than the payoffs of being stuck. You know, when we're stuck somewhere, we can be lazy. We don't have to take a risk. We don't have to step out and try something new. We can just be comfortable in our comfort zone. And then we can do a lot of complaining and get some attention. Lots of payoffs, you know, and being stuck. We probably have experienced some of them. But it's love that changes the mud to glory. It's love that gets us out of the mud. And if we can send love into the mud, it transforms into love. So all things transform into love when there's love. So I'll give you a little experience I had um, this last week with the mud. I was really in that place of glory. You know, I had just finished my meditation and I had a lot of things to do that day that would be fun things to do. And I went out and got in my car and I turned it on. And the engine light came on again. <laughs> so there I was in the mud. I started number one worrying. Oh my gosh, how far can I drive this? How did it happen again? Is there something radically wrong with the car? I mean, it went on and on the worry. Then I started complaining because I had to get my car fixed again. I'd have to be without it again. And it happened again. And I just started the complaining and the criticizing. Then I started judging myself. You know, I have a car that's really a senior citizen <laughs> in the life of cars and for not trading it in sooner and having to put so much money in a car. I mean, it was a big, big mud puddle there I had gotten myself into. And then I just stopped. I, I know a better way to do this. I've been working on this for quite some time. And I just went to my heart and I started sending love to everything. To me for worrying and all the things that I'd done to create the mess. <laughs> for my car, for putting the engine light on when I didn't need it. I just started sending love and in that moment things changed. I went back to the glory. What had happened was just my engine light came on, period. And I didn't take it to all those places in my head and my ego self where it could go and really slow me down. So just an example. So the idea is, when we're in the mud, send love to that mud. Our ego voice tells us things that we need to do. Send love to our ego. So the idea is how to get out of it, is to send love to it. And it is transformed into love in our heart, making it easy for us. So that brings us to the question, what can we do to take care of the mud that's showing up in our world right now? There is a lot going on that's never gone on before or it's been a long time since it happened. We found it in our politics. We find it in our leaders. We find it in those that want to be our leaders, the things that are going on of criticizing, complaining, and judging. And we find it also in our human rights issues that are right up on the table now. Yesterday in the Observer, this was the headlines in the Charlotte Observer, what it said is many Americans are gloomy about the future of our country. Then it went on to say how many gloomy Americans we have. Two-thirds of the population are gloomy about our country. So what are we putting back into the environment but gloom? If we're gloomy, our gloom is going out into the field and the field's that field that connects us. So we have to change that gloom to the power of love. And then what we have to do is we have to be the ones that work on this earth to bring the power of love 
and uh, get rid of the love of power, which is fueling a lot of the things going on in our world. So we don't want to take our eyes off of what's going on. We want to see what's going on. But we don't want to join the people that are gloomy about it or complaining about it or judging it. We want to be the ones that see what's happening. We don't have to like it. We don't have to agree with it. It doesn't have to be anything that we want in our life. But we can still send love to it. That's what changes everything. And that is what will bring the glory into our living experience. So I would like to close today with something that really does um, give us an example of what it's like to live in the glory. It's from Grandma. You may already know Grandma. Maybe you've been here when she's come before. I bring her whenever I need a good example of somebody who's living a life of joy. So get ready for Grandma's letter as we conclude today. She starts off, Grandma starts off, the other day I went to a local Christian bookstore and I saw a honk if you love Jesus bumper sticker. And she said I was feeling particularly inspired that day because I had just come from a thrilling choir performance followed by a thunderous prayer meeting. So I bought the sticker and I put it on my bumper. I was stopped at the red light at a busy intersection, lost in thought about God and how good God is and I didn't notice the light had changed. Good thing someone else noticed if someone that loved Jesus because if he hadn't honked, I'd never <laughs> noticed. <laughs> I found that lots of people loved Jesus. While, while I was sitting there, the guy behind me started honking like crazy. And he leaned out his window and he screamed for the love of God, go, go, go. <laughs> I thought, what an exuberant cheerleader for Jesus. <laughs> and then everyone started honking. I leaned out my window and I started waving and smiling at all these loving people. <laughs> I even honked my horn a few times to share in the love and the joy. There must have been a man from Florida back there because I heard him yelling something about a sunny beach. <laughs> I saw another guy waving at me in a funny way. He had one of his fingers sticking up in the air. <laughs> when I asked my grandson who was in the back seat what that meant, he said, oh, it's probably a Hawaiian good luck sign. <laughs> Well, I've never met anyone from Hawaii, so I leaned out the window and I gave him the good luck sign. <laughs> My grandson burst out laughing. Well, even he was enjoying the spiritual experience. <laughs> A couple of people were so caught up in the joy of the moment that they got out of their car and they started coming towards me. Oh, I bet they wanted to pray or ask me where I went to church. And this is when I noticed the light had changed. So I waved to all my sisters and brothers, grinning, and I drove on through the intersection. <laughs> then I noticed I was the only car that got through the intersection before the light changed again. <laughs> I felt kind of sad, leaving all my new friends and all the love we'd shared behind. So I slowed the car down, I leaped out the window, gave them all the Hawaiian good luck sign, that's the last <laughs> time, and I just drove away. <laughs> Hard to read that in a lab. <laughs> so let's claim the glory. Let's not leave it as a hope somewhere in our life and let's claim the glory and let's get out of the mud when it comes as quick as we can and get back to the glory that we can share with the world. And let's see the mud for what it is and then let's not focus on the mud. Let's go to our heart because seeing love and feeling love what happens is our perception changes. So we don't have to do a lot of hard work to change our perception of the world. We just have to go to our heart and feel love and be love and feel the love in us and our perception will change. We will see it from the eyes of love. So thank you all and I appreciate being here today with you.
a feeling deep inside Close by standing, joining hands, and singing the. That was 